gladness. We have come into your presence with a praise on our lips and thanksgiving in our hearts. Hallelujah. So we give you the praise, Father. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, Father. 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 You are so worthy. You are so worthy. You are so worthy, Father God. Hallelujah. You are so worthy, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Father God. Hallelujah. You are worthy to receive glory and honor. Hallelujah. Oh, son, toro, baba, sata. For you created all things. And your baba, son, da, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Rebecca, kanda, robosa. The heavens declare your glory, Father God. The firmament shows your handiwork. Hallelujah. And we give you the praise, Father God. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, We thank you, Father, that by grace we are saved through faith. The gift of God. Hallelujah. We are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So come on and make this confession with me. In the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. I have been released from the bondage of sin, and I am free to exercise my covenant right as a born-again believer. The Word of God is my guarantee that I can speak as God spoke and call into existence everything needed to succeed and prosper in life. Hallelujah. So it is by prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, we make our request known unto you, Father God, for you hear the prayers of the righteous and answer them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because we are connected with Christ, we are anointed, we are conquerors, and we are ruling and reigning as kings and priests in the earth realm. We see the manifestation of answered prayer. And when we speak your word, it does not return void, but it accomplishes what it was sent to do. Our lives are completely fulfilling. Our youth is renewed daily. We are satisfied with long life. For you, Father God, have delivered us from trouble for you, Father God, are keeping us. You, Father God, are a shield for us, the glory and the lifter of our heads. We cry unto you, Father, and you hear and you answer out of your holy hill. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we lay down and sleep at night, we have peaceful sleep. And we wake again to your mercy and your grace. They are new every morning. Hallelujah. I will not be afraid of ten thousands that set themselves against me. For you, O oh Lord, are with me. You, O oh Lord, are for me. You, O oh Lord, are greater than anyone against me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and give him some praise for that. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Come on and make this confession with me. We have unshakable faith in the word of God. We stand firm in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have on the whole armor of God. Therefore, we stand against any evil that arises against us. Our loins are girt about with truth 
we have on the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have our shield of faith and we quench every fiery dart of the enemy. We have on the helmet of salvation and we have the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I declare I am anointed. I am blessed. My life has been made whole in every area. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God is the final authority in my household and it governs my actions and my thoughts. So I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what I see in my natural eyes. I'm moved by what I believe. I believe the word of God. The word of God is true unto us. What the word says is how it is. We believe the word, therefore we speak accordingly. The word says, I'm healed, therefore I am healed. The word says, I'm blessed, therefore I am blessed. The word says, I am righteous, therefore I am righteous. The word says, if I am willing and obedient, you will make me rich. Hallelujah, glory to God. Well, I am willing, I am obedient, therefore you have made me rich. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because I obey and serve you, I will spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to your name, Father God. I am your agent who knows how to trust you, God. Thanks be to you, Father, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father God. Come on and repeat after me. I am, I am the, redeemed the redeemed of the Lord. Of the Lord. And, whatever and whatever I say, I say is, so. is so. I declare it. Declare and it is so. For thine is the kingdom. So mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power. So mine is the power. For thine is the glory. So mine is the glory. Forever. And ever. And ever. Come on and lift up a hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just wanted to read to you guys Psalms 148, verses 1 through 5. Come on. It says, Hallelujah. Praise God from heaven. Yes. Praise him from the mountaintops. Yes. Praise him, all you his angels. Yes. Praise him, all you his warriors. Yes. Praise him, sun and moon. Yes. Praise him, you morning stars. Yes. Praise him, high heaven. Yes. Praise him, heavenly rain clouds. Yes. Praise, oh, let the praise the name of God. Yes. He spoke the word, and there they were. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to your name, Jesus. You may sit and ask yourself what praise is. You probably didn't ask, but I did. Praise, and I had to do a little research this morning, is a joyful recounting of what God has done with, yes, for you today. Yes, hallelujah. That'll make y'all want to jump. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Woo, joyful okay. recounting. Okay, so yes, praise God. is a joyful recounting. Okay, but don't be, so let's not be boring this morning yes. and That's sit right. down and think about what he hasn't done, what he gonna do. Let's think about what he gonna, what he's already done. Yes. Come on, y'all. We gonna Come praise. On. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Let's praise God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, God. Woo. Hey, 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Let everything that has breath, that has breath. Praise the Lord. 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 Pra
praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Yes, God. I'll praise on the mountain. Yes. I praise when I'm sure. And I praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. I'll praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. My enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Praise cause I know you're still in control. Yeah. Our praise is a weapon. It's more now. Oh, yeah. My praise is a shout Woo! that brings Jericho down. Yes, God. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hey, so we're going to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hey, go. Hey, go. Okay. So praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Won't you praise the Lord, oh my soul. Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your love, God. Hallelujah. 
cannot go from your spirit. How far from your presence could I run? Yeah. 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 When I try to hide, God, you find me. The darkness you light up like the sun. Said you are my fortress, fortress, my friend, my friend. You'll be faithful, God, faithful to the end. Said you're my deliverer, deliverer. I come, I come. You'll be with me, God, with me through it all. So I want to quote. We declare. Ain't nobody love me like you. Oh, 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 yeah. You keep on giving me life. Come on and make yeah. that your declaration. Ain't nobody love me like you. Yeah. You keep on giving me life. Come on and declare it. Oh, oh, oh. Ain't nobody. the works of your hands. Oh, oh, oh. You wrote every page in my story. My statue covered for anything. And you are my portrait. My portrait. My friend. My friend. And you're faithful. Faithful to the end. And you are my deliverer. Deliverer.
Okay, this next song is going to be real simple. I'm going to feed you the words. If you sit down, can everybody just get up, get in the praise posture if you're not already in it. Hallelujah. And let's Hallelujah. give God some praise, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything to me. Everything to 
of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whew. It feels so good to be connected to and a part of a ministry that continuously feeds our spirit week after week after week. And I'm so thankful. We want to welcome you to Numa Church where the life-giving presence of God breathes upon his people. And we also want to say welcome to our PYE Sunday. Woo! Hallelujah. On behalf of our apostle, our prophet, our founding pastor, Dr. R.J. McCowan, our executive pastors, Pastor Kisman, Pastor Ivan Brown, and, and our babies, Reagan and Lacey, we want to welcome you to our live streaming audience, welcome you to our life, your life-changing experience this morning to Numa Church. Uh, we want to say thank you for being with us, uh, and we guarantee and I know that's a strong word, but we guarantee that your life will never, ever be the same. So for our upcoming announcements, Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, it's next Sunday. All right, next Sunday, March 31st, okay? And so we will be having our Resurrection Sunday where we are thanking God for giving his life for us, okay? Uh, also, Keys to Canaan on Saturday, April the 6th. That is where Pastor Ivan comes up and he drops so many nuggets and he gives us life-changing information in regards to our finances and our life and things of that nature. And so we want to make sure that we come out and support. The time for that is 12 noon. Okay? So April the 6th, the first Saturday in April at 12 noon. Also, Hope For Today, our podcast with Dr. R.J. McCowan, every Wednesday at 12 noon. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we tap into um, that as well. So Hope For Today podcast with Dr. R.J. McCowan uh, every Wednesday uh, at 12 noon. And then this month, we are having our Level Up series. Our focus is leveling up. Uh, we had a great time imparting to uh, our youth and we'll be extending that again on today when we go down to the heat house uh, and really pour into and impart to our young people about how they level up in life okay and so we're really really excited about that and that is our topic for the month of March is the level up series and then today is our first super Sunday yeah. all right yeah first super Sunday uh, for 2024 and so please give from your life, pray, ask God, allow him to lead you, guide you, and direct you on what you should be giving, okay? 
make some sacrifices as it relates to it. I know for me and my house, my wife, our kids, we're, we're going to sacrifice and make sure that we give what God is telling us to give, okay? Because we want to see uh, the great manifestations that God is going to bless us with, okay? So please, 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 please just seek God and ask him what he would have you to give. But this is our first Super Sunday, okay? All right. Well, y'all stand back up on y'all feet. Hallelujah. Woo. All right. Bless you. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. So you know this month we've been talking about leveling up, right? Yes. I said this month we've been talking about leveling up, right? Yes. Okay, so as a believer, one thing that we tend to know and we tend to verify is that when we level up, if through Jesus' redemptive nature, we get the cheat code. Amen. So when we get that cheat code, that means that everything that's successful for us is a failure for the devil. When we excel, the enemy fails, amen? So when we say we're going into another level, that means that we're going into another level of worship. That means we're going to another level of praise. That means we're going to another level of generational change and atmospheres. We're breaking traumas. We're breaking everything that's pertaining to sickness and disease has to go because we're leveling up to a life of health, amen? So when we say we're going to a new level, I want y'all to go in with us, amen? Go ahead, hit that track one time. Let's go. Here we go. Hey, 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 hey. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We on a new level. 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 Brought us a new shovel. Hey, put the devil in the dirt. The good Lord is our shepherd. Let's go. Try out and watch him work. Let's go. We on a new level. 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 Brought us a new shovel. Work, work. Put the devil in the dirt. The good Lord is our shepherd. Here we go. Try out and watch him work. Let's go. We on a new level. 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 Brought us a new shot. Let's get it. Put the devil in the dirt. The good Lord is our shot. Try out and watch him work. One more time. We on a new level. 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 Brought us a new shot. Hey, put the devil in the dirt. Get it. The good Lord is our shot. Hey, hey, here we go. Same. Wait, 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 wait. Hey. God is with us, no debate. Okay. Righteousness is on the face. Okay. Hey. Holy Ghost hey. is on the page. Okay. Hey. Angels with us on the stage. Hey. Wow. You can see the status shine. Okay. Come on. We will never Come be on. ashamed. Come on. Victory is Come what on. we claim. Wow. Wow. We on a new level. 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 Bought us a new shop. Let's go. The good Lord is our shop. Work. Try him out and watch him work. One more time. Work. We on a new level. 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 Sing it. Bought us a new hey. show. That's right. Hey. Put the devil in the dirt. The good Lord is our shop. Try him out and watch him work. Say. Hey. Say. One more time. We on a new level. We own it, we own it, we own it, we own it. Do it, church. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody lift your hands in the attitude of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking of going into another level, we're going to go into this ocean of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So receive everything pertaining yeah. to Jesus. Pertaining to life and godliness as we sing this song to you, amen. Yes, hallelujah. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you may call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. 
and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Think they ready about you? Hey, hey, I'm yours and you are mine. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yours and you are mine. Yeah. Check Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39. Makes it plain. I don't overanalyze, so I overrun all the devil's lies. I will not compromise. Cause if God got it, it's already mine. Get illuminated, yeah, it's time to shine. That's one thing you cannot deny. We got the victory. Yeah. Victory, yeah, victory, yeah. Victory over the enemy. Victory over the poverty. Victory over the sickness. God is working, I'm a witness. Ever since Jesus was risen, all I'm seeing is redemption. Don't you know we got the See what they don't understand. Sing. The Lord fights on my behalf. Sing. And through the blood of the Lamb, Sing. I'll always have an upper hand. Sing. When he came out the womb, hey. I knew he always had a plan. Ch when Jesus got up out the tomb, Sing. he put the power Sing. in our hands. Ha. Now we walking with authority. Walk it. Big step and no sorority. Okay. Okay. True citizen of the kingdom of God, so I never really consider myself a minority. Yeah. Quit playing, never artificial with the faith. Just know bah. that you're dealing with a real bah. Deeply bah. rooted, God pursuing bah. power, future condemnation, can't reduce it. Hold. Salute. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Yeah, 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 yeah I'm yours and you are mine Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, one more time Say it. I'm yours and you are mine Listen uh, can't you tell that we own harvest stop the seeds that we've sown? Worship any time that we won't, cause Come we on. don't care. Listen, hey. what circumstances may say, we Come lift on. our heads up Come anyway. On. Come I'm on, we're God's on. grace. Come we on, clear. Ha. Ha. as we put his kingdom. Ha. Uno, Say. you know, we stay blessed like we're supposed to be. We stay friends like we're supposed to be. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Ooh. Turn up. Watch this, the operating authority is our number one priority Because Same. we got this new hey. our revival, we are the champions what? See the title, kinetic energy, I'm on fire for Jesus, I'm Come riding. on, come Body on, come on And don't tell me warrior, but I don't battle against flesh and blood Cause the battle was settled, Jesus not for us, he gave us a spell Testimonies, yeah, you know we got several Look, my God is big Ain't nobody bigger, bigger. We give him praise, sing it, that's sing just it. what we figure ha. Give him all the honor, give him all the glory Cause we win in the story Yeah. Let me walk upon the water Wherever you Worship Thank him. you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. your great Jesus. name on today. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Let's give it up for our youth. Hallelujah. Doing big things and singing about a big God. What a day of celebration. You going to join me? All right. So we are so excited about today. Yeah. This, kick, this kicks off our very first Super Sower Sunday. Yes. Hallelujah. And what does that mean? That means that we're going to be in a um, campaigning for us to give and for us to sow as families and making the house of God a priority when it comes to our lives. Because how many of you are believing God for big things? All right. So God has, he knows this. So he knows he put a plan in place and he's, it's called seed time and harvest. And this is God's system of finances. This is his way of ushering families in to the blessings that he has for our lives. So as much as the culture fights it, we know what the kingdom stands for. So no culture can tell me I'm giving money to a man. No culture can tell me you ain't got to give. You ain't got to do this. But, you know, I saw something so silly today, this morning. I, sh I should have known better than get on Facebook this morning. Should have known, but should have guarded my heart a little bit better. And it was a question that said, have you ever seen the pastor take the tithe directly to God? What? Yeah, like Scotty Bean wrote to heaven. He gave it. Right. <laughs> no, that lets me know that's an individual that has not even attempted to crack the Bible to understand that God has a system put in Silly. place. No. No, of course, the past, the, you know, I'm a man of God. He's such a man of integrity. He doesn't even oversee the tithe and offering like that. What do I mean? He looks at ledgers. He doesn't know which family supports, which family doesn't support. Because in his eyes, in the eyes of a pastor, in the eyes of a shepherd, he believes that everyone believes in the vision. He believes that everyone, everybody wants better for their families. Because I don't know about you, but I want my children to experience a life on another level yes. than I've ever lived in my life. And so what? They'll keep taking the generation to the next level. That's what this level up is about. And guess what? We're do I'm living on another level because of the seeds that were planted before me. What? And it feels good What now to add my faith, add my agreement, add my seed to the seed that was sown before me. And I know you think that you've gotten to the place that you've gotten on your own, but I just want to remind you what, that somebody has sown for you. Somebody sowed a prayer for you. Somebody sowed a seed for you. Somebody sowed a hug. Somebody did something to make sure that you're in position. So that's what Super Sunday is about. What you say, what is that? This is a time when we go before God and we, we, we purpose, and he'll tell you exactly what to give, that you set in your heart and your mind, you say, okay, this is above my tithe, this is above my offering. God, what is it that you're leading me to do? Because when you make it that personal, trust me, he's, he's very involved. Because I don't believe in tipping God, I don't believe in, you know, just you know, just writing something down and giving it what, no, if you purpose in your heart, I can share a testimony with you. I purposed in my heart how much I wanted to give for Super Sunday. And how many of you know it manifested this week? This week. And it brought me to tears because I said, God, you heard my heart cry. Well, I want to be, you know, I want to be in position to give and to sow on the level that I'm believing you for. So if you're saying it, you know, Pastor Kay, it hasn't happened yet, close your mouth and just start worshiping God in advance. This is not the only Super Sower Sunday. This is the first one. And I believe if you step into this first one, all the rest of them will be blessed. Honey, you know, right. that's, not, that's not taught enough in the body of Christ about petitioning God. Yes. And, and, per, and you know, Scripture says in 2 Corinthians in, uh, chapter 9, it says, you know, God, you know, give as you pur as God purposes it in your heart. Yes. And you can you can actually petition God for what it is that you want to give and have a conversation. But 
there's so many instances yes. in the Bible where God says, come and reason with me. Yeah. Come and let's talk this out. People act like God is so, so far away. And that's because they're not talking and having dialogue yes. and having daily or weekly communication with God. But you can talk to God. You can petition God. You can, you can say, God, my desire is to give this amount of money or give that up to give this or whatever and you could talk to God and reason with him yes and watch it show up we've how do we know it works we've done it so yes. many times yes we really have that's so right this works guys and yeah. the word says what well, he will give seed yes to, to the, the sower. sower well that's your word you can stand on that all right so that's this is that's the heart of this ministry is never to put pressure on anybody we don't cast needs we cast vision all right, and we're doing this from a place of, you know, having to pay for things ahead of time. The heart of this ministry is for not one failing family or one failing business to be amongst us. Amen. Your first family is not in competition with you. So don't you be in competition with your first family. So go the shepherd. So go the sheep. So all we want is, but every time something good happens for you, it just puts another log on the fire for us. It makes us run and go to hear of you being healed of cancer. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. To hear you've been healed and set free and, and debt canceled. That makes us go deeper in the word and want to teach you more and want to pour out to you what we want to give you all that we have. Well, that's the heart of a loving shepherd and, and family. We want you all to win. So this is what this It's an alley-oop. I don't even play ball, but I know that. It's an alley-oop to you and your family. What? To get involved in the kingdom of God of finance. And you say, well, I don't understand. Keep coming. Come to Keys to Cain and keep showing up on Sundays. Keep coming up on Wednesdays. We will walk you through this. We're not teaching you about something only we've read we're teaching you about something that we live we understand the power of our seed our seed is a weapon it breaks through anything that's trying to hold you down all right so when, but we also know the importance of showing you in the word we also know the importance of showing you where your gifts are going where your tithe and your offerings are going all right you want to know that well, first of all, look around. We all sitting here in comfort. Whether you know it or not, the church got an electric bill. Is Jamise here? She can verify that. She works at the EPB. You mean because we're saved, they don't give no, it to us for free? No, 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 no. Not because we minister every Sunday and every Wednesday. EPB say, hallelujah, here you go, every month. Not only at this place, but there's another location over in East Ridge. That's where Levada Studios. And did you say it's just a recording studio? No, what's going on over there, y'all? We're setting it up for TV studios. What is that for? That's another resource that the city can use and people can rent that out. And also for us to go and preach the kingdom. Wouldn't you like to see more podcasts and more things? We shouldn't, we're not stopping until we're on seven days a week, 24 hours. Yes. Why? The world doesn't stop. So why should the body of believers only work on Sundays and Wednesdays? All right, so that's, that's another location. Then our heat, they're about to go down to their own facilities. And then if you look across the way, the BJM Center is under construction. Yes. What is that? It's another, another place that we get to say, look what God has done. We're, we're expanding Numa Christian Academy over there. We'll have multi-purpose rooms. We'll have classrooms. We'll have, you know, some of you who are designing to do businesses. We're calling that our business incubator. Why do some people need a place to go where they don't have to pay rent for a couple of months? Amen. You make a good pound cake. Well, guess what? That's just not for your family to enjoy. That's for the world to taste and see how good it is. You just need that hand up. You just need that extra help. 
So that's what all of these things that are going on. And then we've got him. We believe we know he's a prophet to the nation. Yes. We just signed a new TV deal. Yeah, we just signed a new TV deal. So just because you're not seeing it's being played in what Knoxville we'll be going and going in millions of households and mm -hmm. all through Tennessee and Ohio. Yes. Right. What the king? He's, he's not pushing R.J. McCowan. He's pushing his brand is Jesus. And we know that the word that we've heard has helped us, so we know it will help millions of people that we haven't even met yet. We know this is not our church. Y'all are just the volunteers. The real church hasn't even showed up yet. So we're in position. We're getting ready. We've got books, many books. We've got all of these things that are going on. So that's where you're tied. And, you're, and then we sow into other ministries as well. And then we go out in the community. We do things. And Ivan's got a new project. We'll let you know about that in days to come. But as for now, did you want to go ahead and show the pics? Yeah. We just wanted to make sure that you can see that we're showing you. When you give into Super Sore Sunday, it just helps strengthen the ministry, helps put in place. We want to start, first of all, with our youth. Like I said, we have Numa Christian Academy that's going into the BJM Center. So when you give, it goes straight there. Our, this church is really about no generational gaps, so we always start with our youth, all right? We love being able to do things for them, and, you know, they're going to be hosting vacation Bible schools and all of these things um, coming up. And our heat ministry, they're getting ready for MP24. Can y'all believe that? Right, so we have awesome youth leaders and pastors and things that they're gearing up and getting them ready for that. And then, of course, the one that we want to, uh, our clothing drives, we want to do up those more than just once a year, but we want to get in those. Because how many know now it's time to, it's spring cleaning time. It's time for you to get rid of those clothes with those tags on them that you've been talking about you're going to lose weight and get into, but that's all right. And we're going to be a blessing to the community. Because I know y'all got brand new stuff, so yeah. All right, why? Because it's such a blessing to them. It's blessing, to, I mean, to see people coming in and getting all the stuff. How I many, you know, giving in the spirit of generosity is fun. It's fun. And so I hope Harvest, we get ready for that. And then we have various activities that go on throughout the year. Our wild ladies, we're about to get ready for our wild brunch. The Big Hat Brunch. These are just some of the things that we do. And our confirmed guest speaker this year is Pastor Carol Jones will be in the building. So how many know them hats ain't going to stay on too long? And we are taking it off site this year. And, you know, just everything we're doing, we're, we're calling it leveling up. So when you're giving... This is all the things that you're giving, you're contributing to. Um, the kids will be coming in next week doing petting zoos and all these kind of things. Guess what? It takes that green stuff to do it. If you, any parents in here know, it takes green stuff to raise children. Well, if you know that, then God knows it takes green stuff to raise his spiritual offspring as well. So that's the reason why we do those things, and this is why this is how you can be a part, all right? Another opportunity is Miss Taffney here. Come on up, Miss Taffney. Praise the Lord. We realize we have not invited you all to be exchange partners in quite some time. So we want to just remind you of R.J. McCowan Ministries and that you can be a partner with us as we send our man of God to the globe. Yeah. Hallelujah. He is preaching and teaching the word of God with clarity, removing us from the disappointments of, of failures of life and giving us hope for a better tomorrow. And guess what? There are people all over the globe that need the same deliverance. They need the same word. They need the same breakthroughs that we have. Praise God. And so we want to undergird our man of God. We want to send him out in style. We want to send him out in style. So if you would like to be an exchange partner, come out after service to the desk, and we will give you a form. 
if since we're leveling up come on if you're already a partner praise God for you let's level up our partnerships okay let's level up we've got uh, buildings to build we've got to send our men of God out and so we just want to be a blessing to him and to the world praise God I remember when we first joined this ministry we felt in the, the spirit of the place was that there was no no exchange partnership at that time but we felt that in the spirit that this was going to happen that, that the time was going to come and we wanted to be a part of something bigger than ourselves bigger than our own families bigger than our own bank accounts praise God and so this is our opportunity because when we send our man of God out that's me going out praise God hallelujah and God is going to count it unto me hallelujah because I sent his chosen vessel out to the community and out to the world praise God hallelujah I'm fired up. That's right. So we want to separate that. I'm going to up my partnership with that. And you say, well, I joined, but I haven't been given. Just pick right back up in the partnership because we want to start separating those. Days. We're believing God that exchange partners will fully fund every media endeavor. All right. Do we have your agreement with that? All right. So at this time, we are going to go ahead and receive our super sower Sunday seed. All right, if you want to do it all at ushers, please. If you're watching us via YouTube, Facebook, however you're watching, don't miss this opportunity to position your family. I love when Taffney said, you know, when we sow and give, we're sending the word out through our man of God. That means we don't have to go. I can't honestly say, you know, I, I'm, a desire of mine is to go to Africa, but I can honestly say that God has called me to be a missionary. But if he hasn't called me, but he has called me to invest in other missionaries. So when you're sending your man of God out, when you're sending the word out like that, that's something or someone going in your place to make that happen. It's, that's why it's called exchange partnership. I love that. So you get credit just like the people that on the ground. Yeah, giving and sowing. Yeah, that's what happens. I'm going to give mine now. You want to give yours now? Well, hold on. I'm going to give mine too. <laughs> All right. This is our super sower. What does that mean? We inspiring you. Yes, we're encouraging you to level up, to do more. To sow and to give. And not just do it, it's an, ex it's an exchange. You have a blood ball right to put your petitions before God. To let him know exactly what you believe in God for. Whether it's healing, mental clarity, financial seeds. There's testimonies all over the building. We'll get to those. We'll, we'll let you testify. Because how many know God is still a debt counseling God? Debt is anything that has you yoked or in bondage. All right, so you can text to give. Ushers, y'all want to go ahead and just take it to be easier just to pass the buckets. PYE, y'all want to come and give us a worship song? Come on, give us a worship song. As we get this atmosphere charged and ready for a life changing word. You can go ahead and pass them. Go ahead and pass the bucket. Again, if 
you want to become an exchange partner, if you want to up your financial seed, just stop by the R.J. McCowan Ministry desk. Y'all too quiet. Hilarious, cheerful givers aren't quiet. They're excited. They're loud. All right. All right. PYE, y'all ready? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Jump on your feet. Hallelujah. Worship. As we begin to worship or continue to worship our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. You get the glory out of our lives. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your holy name, God. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight in the inside, in the inside of me. Come fill my life. From the inside, from the inside of me, set me on fire. From the inside, from the inside of me, cause all I
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Worship you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I sense something shifting. And it doesn't mean one thing stopping, but something else added. In addition to more than what it's been. And that's an awesome feat. 
for God himself. It'll take him to pull this off. You know what I mean? Yes. It just will. It'll take him to pull this thing off. And um, vision, one of my favorite subjects. Without it, you know what happens. You don't do well in life, do you? So lift your hands. This is our day of youth, which includes me. <laughs> Does it include you? I see you, Miss Joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Worship you, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. His voice alone are we interested in. We thank you for the free course of the words that makes its way into our lives and our living to change what needs to be changed, situate us in ways that we don't know how to, bringing us to places that it would take you for us to comprehend, to teach us to comprehend and be responsible for. So we thank you for the free course of the word now, and it's all in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. If you agree, say amen. amen. And you may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God, it's a big day. Yes, it's a great day. Yes, uh, watch the air. What I mean, I don't mean to stand and look at it. I mean, t -t -t turn it up. <laughs> we turned up in here. We need to turn the air up with us. All right, let's do this. Let's go to a classic text. And let me tell you up front what we're going to talk about this month. Uh, again, it really is one of my favorite subjects because when I started this ministry, I didn't understand the need or the, the real necessity to develop and articulate a vision with clarity. It has to be done. If you don't, people are left vague, unclear, unsure, uncertain, and they don't participate because at that point you don't, you don't valid or warrant support. It's hard for people to support things they're not clear on what it is they're being asked to support. So not many churches have articulated successfully yeah. why vision. Yeah. There was a time when we did the, we did the numbers, and uh, I think it was something like 87% of churches that are up and running who don't have vision. That's right. mm -hmm. They have population, they have members, but they don't have vision. So vision, is, it, it, there are, there's not a vehicle there. Usually what happens in a case like that, tradition bleeds in, uh, religion bleeds in, and that becomes their identity. And they'll fight you over it too. And then it was something like, I think, 3%, excuse me, something like uh, another 10% who had vision, but wasn't doing a good job of, 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 uh, of articulating it uh, with clarity successfully. So people were still confused about things, unclear. I think at that time, the ratio was only something like 3% of churches were doing pretty good at this and had gained some mastery at having vision from God, articulating it with clarity so it could valid support. Along comes with that is organ strong organization, organizing. Why do you need to organize? Because growth that comes from vision has to be sustained. And the worst thing you could do or I could do, okay, let's put this back up here. The worst thing I could do as a senior voice in this house is be irresponsible for not organizing. Organization has to be in place to sustain growth that our faith is producing. And by say, vision. <laughs> So there is necessity of vision, which I'm going to cover some today, but let me just kind of say these things you're going to hear over the ne next few weeks. The thing I'm going to cover today is necessity of vision. It may overlap a little bit. Then we'll talk about the purpose of vision. Then we're going to talk about, the, um, uh, again, the necessity of vision. And guys, you know, you got personal vision, which you should have. But it should never conflict with corporate vision as it relates to the kingdom of God business. You need to benefit from corporate vision just like you need personal vision, vision for the family unit. Isn't that right? And what you don't want to do is challenge all the time, question all the time the vision of the house. That's called division or division. 
That's a real enemy to vision is when you are divided with vision. That's an enemy. And we don't want that in the house. We don't allow it in the house. Isn't that right? And let me just say this up front, you know. I was listening to Kills and Ivan uh, cover some things, which is really good. But the Lord said this to me, and he'll teach me on the way. I was driving in this morning. And uh, we'll cover this in Philippians chapter 4. And we'll start at verse 11 here in just a few minutes. But I'm going to go to the classic text first. You know that, Proverbs 29 and 18. But if you notice, the apostle Paul, who gained mastery about dealing with things, are times of need and times of abundance. He said, I know how to abound. In other words, I know what it's like to prosper and have abundance. Then I know what it's like to be in need or lack. But what he's telling them, we'll read it here in a little bit, he's telling them that he had gained mastery, he had been trained to gain mastery. This ministry, he said, we don't, we don't speak to you in respect of need. It doesn't carry the air of lack. It doesn't permeate in here. You walk on, this, on these grounds and you don't sense lack or need. But there is business to be taken care of. If you come around me, you're not going to sense it. You're not going to sense me needing, needy. You're not going to sense me lacking for anything. But I have business to take care of. And it requires kingdom of God investors. You putting things in perspective? So stop waiting on you sensing a need to get involved. All right, let me, let me just take my time here. You okay? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The necessity of vision. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Get that for me first in the Amplified Bible. Classic text. You can quote it. I could. Where there is no vision, you see what's going on with the people. What happens? Said they perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Amplified said, no revelation or no insight. No insight of God and his word. The people are unrestrained, and I put chaotic. And it took me back when we first started this ministry. I was known as a prophet. You know, that's what I did, prophet, prophesy, minister. I did those kind of things. And prop, I, that, that still bleeds in because that's my first function and first operation as a minister. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this, and I remember people were running in that little building, man, because they found out I was a prophet and I was prophesying to people and they were shouting and dancing. How many know there's a place for that? But the Lord stopped me immediately because I had a vision. And I saw those same people, they looked like little chicken. They looked like chicken, but they had no feathers and no meat. They were chickens, but they had nothing on them. All I saw was bones. So Lord, what I'm looking at, he said, son, they're malnourished. Feed them. Feed them. Take my word and feed them. So I told the people to sit down. When I told them to sit down until you know what you're shouting about, how to confront life, just sit down, let me teach you the word of God. Let me minister the word of God to you. Let me put some meat on your bones. Well, a lot of them left. That's okay. They're still running around with no meat on their bones. And they're looking for a place that's going to take care of them when God wants to take care of them. But they have no insight in the word of God. Amen. And then I saw this vision where a loaf of bread fell right through the ceiling in that building where we started. And it fell in the aisle of that building. And people were walking up and eating from it. He said, this will be a place called feeding ground. You will feed. People will come here and feed off the word of God. Feed and build their lives. Spiritual development and things of that nature. It didn't just come from me and the ministers here locally. We've had some of the best on the globe in here to feed you. Some of the most powerful ministries known on the globe have graced this house. To feed you the word of God. Let the church say amen. amen. It's a feeding ground. Because you and I need insight in the word of God. So the people who don't have that are usually unrestrained and chaotic. The Amplified Crisis said where there's no redemptive or spiritual force to save uh, you from error or evil. 
There is no, excuse me, there is a need. Listen to this. I got this from God this morning. There is a need in life to experience redeeming moments in your life. What do you mean with that? I'm talking about relief from hurtful and painful situations when you've been wrongfully treated. To experience comp compensation for loss or temporary setbacks. It takes redeeming knowledge to, to, to recover you from that. Let me just say this up front. That's what vision is about. Vision is God answering heart cry. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Why did God send me here with this portion of ministry? He sent me here with the portion that he's entrusted me with, what to impart to you to rescue you from life or predicaments that you're probably perishing in. What am I saying? You just don't know any better until somebody shows you. And somebody tells you and shows you by demonstration. So God will use your life as an example in front of you. Amen? Amen. So you need to know what it's like to experience redeeming moments in your life. That's rescue from painful and hurtful situations in life, particularly when you've been wrongfully treated. Anybody been treated wrong in here? I said, anybody ever been treated wrongfully? Denied or deprived access to something you know belongs to you that's good for you? But when you know your position in the Word of God and you know you have engaged and you're part of the kingdom of God, vision is there to break that barrier for you, to get you through that time and in that moment. You need to know what it's like to break through. You can tell when people have broken through things, they got a different walk about them. They talk different. Got another attitude about them. They're not in their dumps about things, man. They up on their toes, man. And they understand the fight every now and then. Amen. So the love of God, listen to this, the love of God is within God. And God who possesses redeeming power. What's it mean, redeeming power? He's talking about a force that God will exert on your behalf to free you from. Bondage of sin and its consequences, as well as deliver you from ill treatment, ill plights, or hardships or distresses. I'm going to say it again. This cost me a little sleep. I love when God wakes me up and I had to write this stuff down. I said it to you again? Yeah. Redeeming power comes from the love of God. That's God's love. From there comes power that God will exert on your behalf to free you from the bondage of sin and its consequences, as well as deliver you from ill treatment, ill plights, hardships, and distresses. God will exert himself on your behalf to change life, your life for you. You may note it doesn't really change until he steps in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm having more fun with this than you are. I don't know why that, that's so. You know, when you, you go in some, in some settings, not ours, you mention offering, that'd be the saddest moment. Oh, Lord, just, just like, oh, Lord Jesus. And people tip and they unfold dollar bills. and No, they fold them up. Quit treating your seed like that. You don't do that, right? We don't do that here. You're not taught, you're not trained to do that here. Now listen, God, I don't have a lot of scriptures for you. I got about four, but I'm going to develop them. Without the vision, without insight into who you are, who God is to you, Satan will keep getting advantage of you. Yeah. He'll keep you out of the system of God, the way of God. He'll keep you away from the, king, the kingdom of God agendas. There are people who avoid a time like this so they feel, so they can tell themselves they don't have to give. And God is still holding them responsible for the soil that they are responsible to be sowing in. Guys, you got to get in this thing. I think that's in Galatians 6. Go to Galatians 6 and chap chapter 6 and verse 8 from the Amplified Bible, I believe it is. If it's not, we'll, we'll look at a couple of translations. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The reason why I get excited about this, guys, because that's what got me out of the duplex. You know, I was talking about some of my covenant friends and Ben just came through calling me uppity in front of y'all. I said, well, quit be calling me uppity. 
<laughs> but you know what? When I thought about it this morning, I said, God, how come that bothered me? Like, God said, well, I'm up. I said, you sure are. <laughs> if you up, I'm up. So we're not aloof from people, but you're above from circumstances and situations like that. God wants you to go ahead and step up into that. Identify with being up like that all the time. Come on, raise your head up. Come on. Hallelujah. Get yourself up here. You might be one praise, one shot away from a breakthrough because of what you've gathered insight in. I know better. When we, got, when we was in that duplex minute, I said, oh, I see something. I said, I see something. And when I saw something, it made me do things differently. It made me talk differently. It made me look at things differently. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 and then verse 8. For, for he who sows to his own flesh, lower nature and sens uh, sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Um, there's a place there I want to go. I'm getting ahead. Hang on here. I think I'm going to back it to Philippians 4. Let me qualify this. Somebody shout hallelujah because hallelujah. there's something I want you to see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it's either in Philippians 4 or it's in Galatians 6. Now watch this. Go to Philippians 4 and verse 9 first from the Amplified Bible. You need examples in front of you. As I minister the gospel, I'm praying for you. I, I have compassion and sometimes I travail for you. I go deeper in. And when I go deeper in, I see some of you. And then I travail for you because I want for you. Because I know how much God wants for you. He wants more for you and sometimes I know I want more for you than what you want for you. And you got to fix your want. I can't fix your want now. You got to fix that yourself. Now watch this. Verse 9, I'm reading from the Empire. I'm actually reading from the classic. Um, it says, practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. That's the Apostle Paul. I can say the same. I've been here in front of you long enough. I said, I've been standing in front of you. My life has been in front of you long enough for you to have confidence in what I'm preaching to you. And if something's not working for you, don't blame the ministry and don't blame me. Something in the formula that don't belong there. Practice what you've learned. Practice what you receive. Practice what you're hearing. Practice what you're seeing in somebody else's life. Model your way of living on it. Are y'all listening? And the God of peace untroubled, undisturbed, well-being will be with you also. See what this man of God is telling them? He said, do like I'm telling you to do. Do like you see me doing in the same peace I'm experiencing, you will too. The same God is supplying you a life where you now have mastery over circumstance situation because you've been trained to be at rest even though you have a need. I'm trained to have mastery when it's time to wait. I'm trained to have mastery when it's time to pause for a moment. I'm trained to have mastery if time has lapsed. I'm trained to not be disturbed, to not be uneasy. I'm trained. Some of you look like you're having, honey, I've been trained. Yes. Trying to train you. I don't get, get mad, don't come to church because I didn't get my bills paid this week. Honey, I'm coming to church, don't care what's going on. I'm believing God. I'm trusting God. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what didn't work. God still works. Something's wrong on my end. He will take the time to adjust it. If I will listen to him, he'll adjust me so I can connect with what he's trying to get to me. You got to be trained to do that. Amen. Give when it doesn't look like, well, I don't know, but it don't look like, honey, don't, I don't put that condition on it. 
I enjoy giving to people who need as much as people who I know don't need. But like this, think that you don't know what, everybody needs a different. Remember, that's, that's relative. Just because a person got a million don't mean he's at ease. He might owe 10. You got to stop thinking like that. Well, I know they don't need that. You don't know anything about them. They're just not telling you. They're, they're too trained to involve you. Because you don't understand that, that level of, uh, of responsibility. Amen. So they're not going to bother you. But they'll, God will invite you into the, into the business of it if you listen to them. It'd be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He said, now if you start practicing, he, he, he can almost say like, if you will start practicing what you're learning and receiving and what you're hearing and what you're seeing or witnessing in me and model your way of life, or living on it, and the God of peace, untroubled, undisturbed well-being would be with you as well. I'll find it in a minute, but in one place he said, look, man, he said, the way you harvest reveals how you've been sowing. And the man of God's trying to tell you, so I'm a sower. I don't talk public about it too much. Sometimes in this series, and maybe I do need to kind of bring it up. I sow because I, I trust. There's moments where Satan wants me to feel uneasy, stuff like that. I, that's the moment I step in. I step, that's not where I back off. He's not going to intimidate me. I know this works. And so I'm sowing, and I'm constantly sowing. Sowing in the ministry. I'll sow in this. How much are you going to sow, Pastor? How much did you sow? You pay attention to your own business, right? But sometimes I don't mind telling you somewhere. It'll be, you know, it won't be just hundreds. It'll be, I'm working on thousands. I'll probably start with a couple, something like that, and work my way into this and keep sowing. That's how I do. If I count this week, I've probably given away seven, eight thousand, maybe nine. Look at that. Something like that. I got people to bless. My mama just had a birthday. I had to bless my mama. I got other things. Bitch, I got to be a blessing. I said, when a table of, of family, six families, I, I had to bless them. I didn't have to, I wanted to. I got to be a blessing. Now you ain't got to, that's, that's up to you where you are. I'm just saying, you got to start this where you are. This is how I live. And people have been a blessing to me. They've been a blessing to me. Where you get it from? People sowing to me, I sow them. I'm trusting God. My harvest reveals what I've been sowing. Not what I've been stealing. Not what I've been misappropriating. Don't ever associate harvest with theft. Amen. Are you seeing the difference? You got to learn to do this on your own. Ask God to help you with this. Why am I more excited than what y'all showing here? So, so he said, man, I ain't troubled. I'm, I'm not disturbed uh, um, about these kind of things. Um, verse 10, I was, I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have received your interest in, in my welfare after so long a time. You were indeed thinking of it, but you had no opportunity to show it. He said, not that I'm implying that I was in any personal one, for I have learned, look at this, I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. This man got there. He was trained. If you're going to go with God, he's going to train, train your family unit. Yes, Quit telling your children what you don't have. Yes. They're talking to them about bills. Get them bills off your dining room table. I mean, I walk in a person's house one time, don't invite me to the house, because I'm going to be looking to see what's going on. <laughs> I can tell where the noise is coming from. I walk in this person's house, yeah, bills all over the dining room table. Oh, Lord Jesus, I no wonder. The Bible said keep the word before you, not bills. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, amen. 
I get them bills. You know who you owe, how much you owe, how long you've been on them. You can tell it. You don't need that reminder in front of you. You can't do anything about it until you can do something about it. So why are you letting that, get, put the word on your table. Hallelujah. Preferably put it in your heart and in your mouth. Don't give Satan those tools to invite worry and things of that nature. Amen? Amen. Don't do that. He said, not that I'm implying that I was in any person want, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. I know both how to be abased and live humbly in straightened circumstances, or he's talking about tight or narrow times, challenging times. You gotta know how to be in challenging times. You'll get past it if you stay with it. I was thinking about a form of memory used to be that came in my heart this morning. Maybe you're listening or watching. The Lord wants you to know that your seeds that you've sown, he'll still honor them if you'll stay put. You sowed seeds here. God will honor them if you'll stay put. Get back in place. Get back in the soil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I sense a prophetic thing coming on here. See, he's telling you, you get, get your life back in this soil. You've sown seeds in it. I know how to enjoy plenty, live in abundance. I have learned in, 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 in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation. That's mastery. If you track it, it says, I've gained mastery here. I know how this is done. You don't know what he's saying? Watch me, I've learned how this is done. I'll show you. And the God that, get, uh, that keeps me where I am will keep you the same way. You see what this man is saying? Facing every situation, we're well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare all, or going without and being in want. I have, I have strength for all things in Christ. King James said, I can do all things in Christ. Isn't that right? Who empowers me. I am ready for anything, equal to anything, through him who infuses his inner strength in me. I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Now listen to this man talk to us here, man. Galatians chapter 6 now, verse 8. We'll start there. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, you can shout in a minute. Just let me get this out to you. Hallelujah. See, when I saw, when I saw Cornelius, because I was going to go over and cry, you're talking about bitch, and I like to just wander and go off into stuff and start digging around. Don't mean I'm going to share it with you, but I do it for my own benefit. I get reminded about vision, open visions and closed vision, all this kind of stuff, things I've been taught over the years. And the highest form of knowing is open vision, of course. And some of the men in the Bible had actually open visions. And um, pretty awesome. So I was, I was going to go see Peter's vision, but I ran up on Cornelius. Because I started in Acts 10, chapter 1. See, chapter 10, verse 1. And I saw Cornelius, who was a captain, a Roman captain over a, a, a military group. Now listen, um, I may just talk to you. Because if you're here for the first time, I don't want to lose you. I want to connect with you. I want to talk to you. I've had different men who walked up to me just out here. Walked up to me. Uh, one of the last male that walked up to me, he said this to me. He said, Pastor, who did you talk to when you needed help like this? Another gentleman walked up and said something. I said, been about three, about three or four. Just out here. How did you do this? Where did you come from? How, what was it? They have those basic fundamental questions because they want to connect. How, in other words, how do I get started? How do I get past this place? Not in your own strength, let me tell you. But God will connect you with somebody. He'll connect you with a vision. He'll connect you with a house that has insight in the word. Situate you, but then you have to participate. Your, participate, your participation and assuming an active role in a vision is a personal responsibility. What's that mean? That, brings to bring, that means, to listen to this very closely, you've got to bring your time, your talent, and your treasure. You've got people always trying to, trying to 
skirt around vision, particularly when it comes time, when it becomes obvious that you're just hanging around. But you're not willing to assume an active role using your time that God put in place, your talent that God gave you, and the treasure that God trusted you with. Time, talent, treasure. That's personal. I'm all the way in. I'm not trying to, I'm not entertaining ways to avoid or shun my responsibility when it comes down to step into giving opportunities. Oh, Roberts taught it like this, never let opportunity pass you by. Never. Never let opportunity pass you by. Don't let a bucket go past you. Don't let an opportunity go past you. I don't have it to give. Let's start with your will or your willingness. It's amazing what if you be willing, what God would do. But it happens all the time. Opportunities just, just stepping right past people. They're out here sweating and cussing and everything you can, lying and cheating, trying to get to a life when God's offering life. But you gotta get involved with the way he does it. Yeah. You have to be an investor in the kingdom. You gotta get involved. Now guys, I'll be honest with you. When I first started, I'm thinking, how in the world I'm gonna do that? We ain't got enough money now, we ain't got this. No. But God was dealing with me. He'll deal with you on a personal level. Yeah, he You'd be amazed what you look like on paper. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? You'd be amazed what you're wasting. You'd be amazed where you're putting finances and time and talent where it does not benefit you or anything God's doing at all. And you wonder what's wrong. He tells you, he said, look, he said, your harvest is evidence of where you're sowing. You sow into the flesh, you're going to reap this. You, you sow in just for self. I mean, that's where you're going to get corruption. You're going to get stuff that's not going to last long for you. Amen. You're going to get stuff in your life that's not going to transfer and make a difference in the next generation. I caught on this about when I was around 40 years old. I started seeing, I, I, it's like I grew up again. When I got close to 40, I grew up again. And I saw the importance of not living just for me. I had a daughter, she wasn't even married at the time. But vision was allowing me to turn back to her and pay attention. If you want rebellion out of your house, you gotta get vision in the house. Your children quit fighting against you and fight for you, the defense, why? Because they see what they're about to inherit. If they can't see inheritance in you, you're gonna get rebellion from them. Because that's their insecurity. When you're not secure, that transfers into them. They get intimidated about life. But when you're secure in God, you've got a whole vision. You're part of a vision. You're part of a ministry. You're part of where God put you. And now you got your children in it, man. The children start to see what they are to inherit. And they start defending that, fighting for it. If you mess with me, you got to deal with her. If you mess with that, you got to deal with Reagan and Lacey. Big time. Mr. Brown, too, but you understand what I'm telling you. That's offspring. What are they springing off of? Vision. So what are they doing? Giving. My daughter does, my grandchildren do. They're giving. What are they doing? They're sowing into things. They see the benefit of investing in the kingdom of God. They're harvesting already in their lives from doing that. Yes, they always associate good with what God is doing in their lives because of it. So Galatians 6, did I tell you to go there? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is this too deliberate for you? If it is, I'm going to get even more so. <laughs> I don't mind slowing it down, so I want you to hear it. Um, 
I said uh, eight, didn't it? Yeah. You know what? Hang on one second. That is very safe, but I want to see something here. Yeah. You know what? I just found it. This is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8 in the Passion Translation. Now watch this. We're going to get ready to stop because I got a lot more, but we got, we can handle this another time. You good with this? Are you good with this? Now listen, I, I was talking to a man of God yesterday. He said, man, we're in the finest hour, and the body of Christ is. We quit listening to the world, and you'll find out what God's doing. When the finest hours, and, and he and I are the same age right now, and we've been around ministry for a number of years and know a lot of the same people. He said, man, this is a good time for you and me too. I mean, I've logged how many years at this? 45, 46 years at this. And so I've been through a lot of things with people, with situations, circumstances, ministry, all those kind of things. I got a, a comment the other day on one of the posts from a lady that in Greenville, Greenville, Tennessee, back in the day back there. And she said, you don't remember me, but I remember when you came years ago and you taught this. Dear God, lady, that's 30 years ago. But she remembered, she wanted to comment about this. And I get those things sometimes. One man came and said, man, I wish I'd listened to you 25 years ago. I said, well, it's not too late. God redeemed the time for you. I'm telling you, listen to me. Don't bump your head four or five times, got knots all over it from, that could have been avoided. One thing about a knot, it'll leave a tender spot up there yeah. to remind you, don't do that again. Yes, Say, so you don't need, I, there's some stupid I ain't gonna do again. I don't plan on doing stupid anymore. Yeah. I'm gonna stay with this word, amen? Yeah. Now watch this word teach you now. Accept full responsibility for what's wrong. Yeah. It's something stupid you've done. Yeah. Hard headed, can I make it plain? He's trying to tell you, but you got your own way. That's why you bumped your head. Now, there's a knot up there that God ain't going to push down real slow. It's going to feel like it's not moving at all. But when it gets down, you ain't doing that no more. Well, lesson learned. But you ain't got to have a knot in your head to learn this. Watch this. Galatians chapter 6. Somebody shout hallelujah. I got to hurry now. I got to speed it up. Are you with me? From the Passion Bible, this is what I like. The harvest you reap reveals the seed that you planted. If you plant the corrupt seeds of self, of self life into the, this natural realm, you can expect a harvest of corruption. But if you plant the good seeds, everybody say good seeds. Good seeds. Boy, that hit me when I, heard, when I saw the word good seeds. What did it mean to plant good seeds? Of course, money. But guys, it, it, it involves, at some point, you gotta, you gotta find some regiment to your life. You got to understand the need to pray. Yes, got to understand the need to study the Bible. Come to Bible study. Yeah. You got to understand the need to get your mouth right toward life and toward people. Yeah. Good seeds. You want to speak good of the ministry, the first family, the other families. Don't. Learn to sow good seeds. If a man's going to enjoy life and a long life, he has to refrain his tongue from evil. You got to sow good seeds. Yeah. Now the awesome thing about this good seed sowing is it always manifests in even when you're sowing good seeds in the lives of people who don't want to hear you, it's amazing how it was almost like ricocheted into somebody who's going to celebrate you and embrace you. Yes, amen. I'm a good seed sower. Yes, if you don't know how to handle it, God will send somebody else. Because yes, <laughs> he intends me to get through certain doors. He intends for you to celebrate a certain kind of life. So don't go ribby because you're trying to love somebody that it can't reciprocate from or back from. Love them to get it. That's not right. It'll ricochet on somebody. You know. You just keep sowing the good seed, okay? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ah, let me finish up with this. One place more, and then I'm going to stop. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's about over. It's almost 12 o'clock. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. And I want to show you something. I read it from the passage of the Bible again, and then we'll stop. This is what I know about God. I ask God to help me to be a, a better sower. Help me to sow seed. He helped me at $5, $10, $20. Yes. 
he helped me when he was supplying me seed to sow. That's what he'll do. If you identify with a sower, God will supply you seed to sow. He's not done. He'll multiply the seed yes. sown. Please hear that. He'll supply you the seed to sow. Then he'll multiply the seed <laughs> sown. How does God multiply the seed sown? Every time you put a seed in, something supernatural. I believe it's the angels. I don't have time to prove it to you, but I believe it's the angels. God, look at this. It is a setup for success. If you listen to God, there's no way you're going to fail. You might have a setback, but remember, the redeeming moment comes where God's going to get you out of whatever it is you got in. The redeeming moment comes, what? To deliver you from hurtful and painful moments, distress, things of that nature. The redeeming moment comes, particularly to the life of the sower. Satan will not have the last say about what happens to you. He will not. I got her, I got it. No, you don't. I'm the redeemed one. God got something else to say about my life. There's something else coming here. There's more coming here. He doesn't have, Satan doesn't have the last say about your life. Now shout it out loud, I'm the redeemed of the Lord. That's God exerting himself in your behalf to relieve you of painful and hurtful times in your life. Say it again, I'm redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah, yes I am. And so are you. I don't want to put this on you like, like you earning something and making something work. No, all God wants you to do is participate. Yes. He done worked it out. Hallelujah. We ain't got to work out anything. Yes. It's already worked out. He just wants you in it. Dive in. So the angel came to Cornelius, didn't he? This is what he says to Cornelius. Look at this. I'm reading from the passage of the Bible, verse 1. Cornelius, who was in charge of 100 men stationed in Caesarea. He was the captain of an Italian regiment. A devout man of extraordinary character who worshipped God and prayed regularly together with all his family. He also had a heart for the poor and gave generously to help them. One afternoon, about 3 o'clock, he had an open vision and saw the angel of God appear in, him, in front of him calling out his name, Cornelius. Cornelius was startled, look at that, startled. He was overcome with fear by the sight of the angel. He asked, what do you want, Lord? The angel said, all your prayers, generosity to the poor, have ascended before God as an eternal offering. What? All your work, labors of love, <laughs> All your good seed sowing has gotten God's attention. See, if you got to know that, I know that my work and labor and generosity of love is not going unnoticed by God and will not go unrewarded by God because he will exert himself on your behalf Are you seeing this? Yes. Now, if you went to Galatians, I'm not going there. He said, that's why he said, therefore, continue to do good. Yes. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keeping on, keep on, keeping on. Now, I'm believing God for your well-being because that's our vision. Part of our vision here is not one family be lacking for any beneficial thing. Amen. Some of you are, 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 are seeing some of those things manifest, aren't yes. you? You see it manifested in, in, in uh, gainful employment. You see it manifested in entrepreneurship. Some of you gone into business, and you may start a little, little but you, you stay with God. You watch God pull you out into a place that's going to be a blessing to you. Yes. He knows what he's doing. You just got to stay with him and stay with him and stay with him and stay with him and stay with him. You understand what I'm saying? You stay with him and watch him, watch him. He'll just bring you on out of here. He'll bring you on out, bring you on out. Next thing you know, you'll say, wow, God's doing something here. He hadn't seen. Because there's a strong entrepreneur anointing in the house. 
The reason for that, guys, please hear me. The reason for that is because it's one of the final frontiers that Satan will have to get his stinking foul hands off so the body of Christ can excel. The preaching of the gospel has to go around the globe 24-7. And we, God, you need, God needs the opportunity to position your life and mine to take ownership. To take ownership of and then prosper in and then expand his agendas. Not everybody is going to be graced to do business, but everybody is graced to prosper. Everybody's graced. Shout it out. I'm graced by God to prosper. It's real. And anytime I get on this subject, I find myself having to kind of do this to the devil, jack him up. He don't want me saying this to you. I'm going to do it anyway. I don't care where I go. I've been doing this for so long. I know the atmosphere when it gets a little tight. That's okay. You're going to be okay. This is breakthrough. Vision's here to break this barrier for you. And most of them have barriers built right up in your mind. The unrenewed one. Remember when the Apostle Paul said, Look, man, said, you, you're not small because of what we're doing to you. You're small because of your own thinking. You're small. You're small thinking. As you grow older, I should say, as you stay longer in the earth, watch about holding on to your 401k like that's your life thing. Watch about holding on to your pensions like that. This is my lifeline. We understand that's yours. But you still keep trusting God. We, just because you're no longer doing what you used to do don't mean you, you recline in life. God needs you more now than before. I had a preacher come and told me, he said, man, did you hear I'm retiring? I said, well, retiring? Yeah, I'm 60. I've been doing this 30-something years. I said, you just now figured out how to get in and out of the rain. What are you talking about retiring? How are you going to retire? He just, he, just, he just taught you something. you got to be kidding me. He didn't want to hear it. I had lunch with him a couple of times, and I got away from him before he talked me into it. No, I recognize real fast. This, this, this is dangerous for me to be around. No, man, I'm good. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't even like what we eat no way. I said, no, I don't care about this, man. <laughs> when the power of God is in me exerting itself to defend off what aging and things like that. Man, I ain't got time to be talking about what I ain't going to do no more. I want to know what's the next assignment. I ain't even finished the next phase yet. It's going to get bigger and better from here, man. You ain't seen nothing yet. You retired at 60, and God recruited Joshua at 80. What are you doing? He recruited Moses at 80, and you retired at 60. You don't retire so that all you can do is just nothing. I went and saw my mom and dad, mom, you know, 96, you know. I was up there trying to keep daddy from doing stuff. That's a task. He's 96. His son, I figured out something. He got him a stick now, but when he had to do certain things, so he'd keep his balance good. I said, you ain't gonna stay. I said, daddy, he said, nope, nope. Said too long, get stiff. I can't, I can't deal with stiff stuff. <laughs> he don't like stiff. I walk, he's stiff. I'll get up anyway, let's go. He'd get up, you know, he'd be walking and going. I get what he's saying. But he told me that 20 years ago or longer. Nope, I can't be still now. Get still. You get stiff in your body. You get stiff in your thinking. You get stiff in your life. So let that be stiffing you up like that. Sitting around on something and you end up not even. Look, look, think about this. Work 65 years and just quit on life. And then leave in about five. You better believe the devil is alive. That don't make no sense, does it? Makes absolutely no sense. Young people, 
younger people. And I know it's not, but you can illuminate to this pretty quick. Timothy and them did around 30. When you're that age, man, pay attention to people who've put the time in. Stop trying to outdate them. Like what they're trying to tell you is doesn't matter anymore. These are old landmarks. They don't change. You still have to confess the word. You still have to get involved in God's system. You still have to take advantage of opportunities. You have to be named. I mean, I remember this. I tell you this and I'll close. There was a, a, a renowned minister. If I called his name, everybody would know who he is. And I was at a minister's conference, and they started this new group called the Elite Group. Now, he didn't orchestrate that, but he allowed it. He said, all right, that's what y'all want to do. And that Elite Group was made up of men and women who understood the call and the vision. And there are times when the vision needed to break through something, they would summon all the elite group to sow. My name got in that group. Who was summoned? The sowers. A sower would take on assignment because of what other people were unwilling to do. Then the people who are unwilling to do get upset or envy. That's what he said. God said, I'm going to give you a life that others will envy because I couldn't get them to do it. So God was sending a sower. I have been sent on sowing missions. I shared some of that with y'all. God has sent me to sent me to a church to have a revival. I said, God, why am I here? This is good, but why am I here? You know, you said, why am I here? He said, I sent you to sow. And when I sowed, I sowed substantially. I, I've done it with Ben. I don't mind telling you. Ben, when they were doing an event in Nashville, and they had a you know, good budget, I know what it costs to do these things. So I came in there, and I, I, I didn't come in up here. I came in, I sold significantly. Ben walked up to me and grabbed me and kissed me on the tr- I said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need all that. <laughs> I said, we good. <laughs> oh, man, I said, we good. <laughs> Man, thank you, man. We good. <laughs> That's all we in the Nashville. Sewing like that. Did a local event where God sent me to sew. Tent revival. Match the offering. I said, do what? Match the offering. He sent me to sew. And I matched the offering. Sent me to a local church where they're having a revival. Hang on. Some of you get a little tight. Just hang on a minute. If you think I'm going to walk out because you uncomfortable, I could care less. I'm sitting here to help you. You'll be the very one that they're talking about me. And I'm trying to show you how come things are. I preach on one of them, but I don't care. But I had, let's go fast. I've been doing real good. I've been real sweet, everything, haven't I? So far. And I just, he sent me over there to sow, so I, I sold the woman of God who's in heaven now. She, they was, her, her and her husband, they were so glad they grabbed me. Man, thank you. They felt relief because of significant sowing. I guess I've been doing this for years. I'm trying to show you how this works. And God will give you the pace. You've been, you've been presented opportunities. Don't let it go. Invest. Be one of the one that God can call on. Because yes. you'll be the very one that God said, oh, I see that car you're driving. I don't want you in that no more. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. I've had him do me like that. So I've, I've seen that car you're driving. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to see you in that no more. Come on over here. I got something else for you. If you think God don't do that, then I'm trying to tell you he does. I was at a car wash one day, minding my own business on a Saturday. I was trying to get my car washed, and as the car pulled up, I said, man, that's a nice car. And then I just went, just went out in the spirit, and they said, go to the dealership. What? Go to the dealership. I went to the dealership. 
Can I help you, sir? I guess. I don't know. What can I help you with, I said? A car, I guess. So I ordered a car. It was the first one ordered in the city. A brand new S-Class Mercedes. Listen, that I didn't have money to put down on. Now don't go ahead and do this. <laughs> We're monkeying around. But see, when you're sowing, God, has, he'll set you up. And he got me out of that car. I ordered that car with $500. $500. Went to Israel on a trip that I couldn't afford. But the man of God wanted me with him. And he situated me and my wife to fly to Israel first class. Ten day pilgrimage in Israel. They sent me notification where the, my car is in the, in the, uh, in the uh, what do you call it, in the, um, in the production stages. It's been, it's been done at this stage, at this stage. I, I'm over in Israel on a pilgrimage. Look at God. Got me looking like somebody. Living like somebody. I didn't have it. He got it. That's God doing stuff for you. What about that? God putting you in those kind of environments, those situations, and he hasn't stopped. But look at the non sower He's got a whole other perception. That joke is stealing the money, I guarantee you he is. You watch. Probably selling drugs. <laughs> They just not come to terms with the goodness of God. And you can tell them, they still just don't believe it. So I don't tell them anymore, I'm telling you. So moving forward, as these opportunities are presented to you, don't look, think of it as being a strong arm or a strong hand. We're not putting any weight on you. In, you're being invited into the way God does it. Please take it serious. And you stay before God about your involvement so God can tell you and your family unit when it's time to do certain things. He'll do extraordinary things. He just will, guys. He'll do, he'll do. I don't know how to tell you, baby. I just, he, it's, it's just him doing it. He'll make life better for you. And it won't just be with stuff. It includes it. But it'd be in relationship. Did you know I almost like heaven, I had kind of like heaven on earth with Beverly. Even when she went through the hormone things, love just got me through it. Amen. And when she got through it, man, I'm in love all over again. Almost 50 years with this woman. I had a blast with her. We had fun, man. And it wasn't... So many years back that we we doing good to have a car to get to the grocery store. <laughs> Hallelujah anyway. But we found contentment in the midst of it and enjoyed our life and our living. And she was Miss Joy, she was just you ain't never see your mama unhappy, did you, cousin? We lived with that girl. She had to wear the same clothes from work to church because she didn't have no she came to church. Her work clothes was her church clothes as a first lady. She didn't let that get in the way. I was having trouble with even getting a good job, decent job. She didn't let that get in the way. We had two cars in the family at one time. They were both hers. And she let me drive. She said, no, you, you drive. You in front of people. You get the So unselfish. You see what I'm telling you? I've been through all this stuff. Got out there one summer, man, it was so hot. And I'm driving the car. I said, you got gas in the car? I jumped in the car and she didn't have no air conditioning, but wouldn't tell me. She wanted me to have the car with the air. 
When I, I girl, if you don't get your seven hundred, I could not believe it. But that's how unselfish she, she was. This is what I told her. I never forget it. I said, if we make the decision, we're going to be together, and I don't care what's going on. Give, not giving each other any ultimatum about any timeline. Well, I'm going to give you six months, Negro. If you ain't getting them straight down there, man, I'm going to have to get up out of here. <laughs> you know, no, you can't. It won't, it won't work like that. I said, we decide we're going to be together and we don't care what goes on. If it means us going, you've heard me tell I'm going to tell it again. If it means us going outside living in a ditch with a canvas over our head and calling it home, if we make a decision to do that, I said, you'll live in the mansion and you, one day, and I said, you, will, you, you won't have to wear the same clothing uh, every day unless you just choose to. She lived in three before she left. So you can imagine what she lives in now. Hey, glory to God. And God said, go over here. And we went. Through with you here, go over here. Investment for you. I know what I'm telling you. I know what I'm telling you. I know what I'm telling you. Got the life to back it up. So don't you be despondent. Don't you be despaired. Don't you be hopeless. I don't care how long it's been. All it takes it, 38 years before me and Bell went to this house. I've heard Kenneth Glory talk about long, how, long the time, how long it was before they went to this house. Years. Who cares? When you position yourself to wait forever, yes. it don't take as long. Take your calendars and throw them in the garbage can. Take your clock. It don't matter how long it's been. It's all about God know what he's doing. Yes, amen. And when the timing is right, we'll add no sorrow. You ain't going to have to work 20 jobs trying to pay for a house, no. You can go to your house and it be a sanctuary where you and God fellowship and peace. Isn't this awesome? Now I sense an anointing breaking through. Y'all sense that? <laughs> I sense an anointing breaking through here. So what is that? What is that? Prosperity anointing. What? Prosperity anointing. Is there a such thing? You read it in the book of Acts. When they got severely persecuted, Joel prophesied and told you this was going to happen. And in the book of Acts, you saw it showed up. It showed up. And when they got persecuted for it, guess what happened? The anointing came on the scene, broke them free. And the Bible said there was a, there was a flood of prosperity. Buried it to hit the people. And nobody lacked for anything. Every family, everybody was brought up. Read it for yourself. Just when you thought Satan's going to, no, the devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. And you can believe that, baby. And he came to rescue us, man. You just got to accept that. Everybody say, it's on me now. It's on me to what? To accept what he's doing with your life. It'll cause you some persecution. But it'll get you blessed. Amen. Worship your Lord, Jim. Lift your hands here just for a second. Let's see. I hear a prophecy. I'm not sure it's going to come from me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Where is it? Okay. I will do a new mm. thing in you. I will do a new mm. thing in you. Whatever you ask for, mm. whatever you pray for, mm. it shall not be denied, mm. says the Lord. I will do a new Think in you. Yeah. I will do a new thing in you. Whatever you ask for, mm. 
We'll take it. Hallelujah. When we come together in spirit, some will have a song. Some will have a revelation. Some will speak with psalms. Some will speak through the wisdom of God. But there will be some speaking. We're in a dispensation where the Spirit of God wants to utter more often. He wants to do it abundantly. Abundance of utterances. Why? To keep you and my life on track. To keep you strong. The Lord told me just yesterday, I think it was, he said, we're in the moments now of prophetic utterances. That's, that's prophecy coming to pass with Tony. The Lord already told him he'd be doing this. Now you're witnessing it. Uttered by song and a psalmist. Isn't that awesome? God speaking to us like this. Oh, it makes me not be in too big a hurry here. How many times has God said things to me, man, and just, God, we ain't got no more money. We, we're trying to finish this building. All I had up here was just blocks. I sat right up there on Little Cleveland Pike. You got to understand, there was nothing out here, just a couple of houses. And I'm sitting out there on that old Cleveland Pike Road, looking across this field with a few blocks. Thinking it, but I'm not saying it. I know better than to do. And when you say what you're thinking, you give birth to it. And I didn't want to give birth to lack, not even the very symptoms of it. But I knew we needed things. And then suddenly, the Spirit of God uttered to me, uttered to me, this will be the result of your faith. And it's going to pay off for you in great dividends. When he said that to me, it was as if somebody paid a million dollars in the bank because of what he put in my spirit. I exploded with vision. I exploded, I exploded with expectation. I talked to a covenant brother yesterday. He said, man, I'm preaching about Satan um, getting advantage, even through preachers, getting advantage of people's life, robbing them of their expectation. Don't ever sow a seed and not have any expectancy. Don't you rape your seed of harvest because of what you won't expect. You expect God to come through for you. You're sowing, aren't you? I said, you're sowing, aren't you? Then expect God to come through. Raise your level of expectancy. Expect God to show up for you. Expect God to bring you through. Expect God to take care of you. Expect God to cover your children. Expect God to strengthen your marriage. Expect God to make your business prosper. Expect God. Expect God to do this. Expect God to do this. He'll be the one to bring this through for you. Hallelujah. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your seed. You expect God to honor what you're doing. Cornelius, I'm an angel from God. Had to be Gabriel because he's announcing something. I'm an angel from God and what you've been doing has gotten God's attention. You get ready to be rewarded for this. Your seeds, your good seeds have come up before the Lord and it's moved into an eternal realm now and it will not be ignored or unnoticed or unrewarded by God. Get ready, Cornelius. Get ready, y'all. Get ready. Expect God to do what you can't do. Expect God to do what, you know, above and beyond who or what you think you know or don't know. Believe God. Trust Him. Expect Him to come through for you. You got that thing to pay, expect God to come through. Expect it. Be a little, just be a little bit more daring. Be a little bit more adventurous. 
Don't let the devil just lock you by well and looking at your paycheck. Honey, God's bigger than the paycheck. Just, just, just be a little bit more adventurous and a little bit more daring. Take or make another move toward. When you step out, raise your head up. Looking with expectancy. Outstretched neck. You know how you're waiting on your loved one to come home. They say, we round the corner. You get to do it. You, you outstretch your neck out with an outstretched neck. Looking for the good. Raise your level of expectancy. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise for that awesome word. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we can give our tithe and offering. You say, well, I've already given with some didn't know that that's what we're doing, so we'll give you another opportunity to give your tithe and offering reading this from different translations and psalms. You don't have to turn there, but I'll read it. Psalms 112 verse 9 says, they share freely, they share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. Wow, what? That's the one thing you always want to make sure what? That you're influencing people to get to know the God you serve. I always ask for my influence to increase in that matter. What I want people when they meet me to know that they're meeting God. Amen. Then the next one says, the wicked will see this and be infuriated. They will grind their teeth in anger and they will, they will sink away their hopes thoughted. In other words, the, the enemy gets mad when he sees your influence on people. But when he sees that you're moving and, and witnessing and being a blessing, the enemy can't stand that. He always wants to mimic that. Or, you know, the devil's got this thing where he tries to dim your light so it, his can shine. But we're telling you, no, we are the light. Because we're children of the light. And because we're generous in our giving and generous in our sowing, nothing or nobody or no plan can steal the light that you walk in. So it's to their advantage, what? To come on into the light instead of fighting the light. Amen? So you can text to give or you can, if you need an envelope, you need a separate envelope. Or if you've already given, that's, that's great too. We just wanted to make sure that everyone was invited in on the opportunity. The super soul offering is us offer that was the offering above and beyond your normal tithe and offering. Right. And here's another time for you to give an offering. What your life. So I was gonna walk you into how to give your life to God. You know, a big a big day is coming up next Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Let me encourage you. That is one of the best opportunities that you can take as a believer to go out to witness to other people and to tell them about Jesus. Yes, absolutely. So if you're here today and if you're watching us on streaming TV, we can invite you to as well. You need a brand new start in life. You know it's time to do something different. And I have some opportunities for you to get into that today. So if you're here today under the sound of my voice and you know that you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, no better time than to do it than right now. So if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you can have Jesus as the Lord of your life. Yes. Also, if you like to read, if maybe you at one time you've accepted Jesus, but then you walked away from God. Maybe you turned your back on God. It's okay. God's not mad at you. He's looking for every reason to reconnect with you. So all you have to do is make one decision to rededicate and recommit your life to Christ. And you can shore up that bond. You can close that gap. Amen. 
Also, if you're here, you're born again, you love Jesus, but you know there's still something missing in your Christian walk. That missing piece is the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. As you can tell here from this church, if you've been here any time, or if, even if this is your first time, you can tell we're not average Christians. We're not Christians that live an average life of just being saved, and that's it. And that's the, the, that's the furthest we go. No. We believe in the miracle signs and wonders that Jesus in the Bible talked about. That should be on the life of every Christian believer. Receive your supernatural prayer language. Get results every single time you pray. Hearing the audible voice of God. If you want to go to that next level in your Christian walk as a supernatural believer, then this invitation's for you. And last, if you're here and you're looking for a church home and you want to receive Numa Christian Center as your church home, then we'd love to have you and your family come grow with us. You get more than just a church, you get a family. You get people that'll stand with you and pray with you and and, and walk with you in this journey of life. Amen? So if you want to receive one or any combination of those four life-changing opportunities, what I want you to do right now, just stand up on your feet and come join me right here and stand at the altar so we can pray with you. Is there anybody here today under the sound of my voice? You want that. You know you need a change, and God is speaking to your heart. Don't, be, don't, don't, don't care about anybody looking around. This is about you and God right now. So if there's anybody here today, you can say, hey, I want that. I want that. Then come up right now and let us receive you with open and loving arms. Is there anyone here today under the sound of my voice? You want that? If you're watching us on streaming TV, contact us on our website at numa.org. Call our church office or come visit us here at Numa Church. All right? Amen. Amen. All right. Closing announcements. We do want to make you aware that um, Dr. RJ and the Numa Church family, we've been invited to go and celebrate Good Friday with Bishop Kevin Adams and Olivet Baptist Church on this Friday at 7 p.m., okay, at their downtown location. So, Dad, would love for you, as many of the church family can come out. We greatly appreciate it on a Friday at 7 p.m. Also, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. Do not come along, bring family, bring children. They have things for the kids all day. I mean, we're just going to have an awesome time celebrating this risen Savior. Yes. All right, the person that we, are, that we talk about, that we love, and that we serve, and that we honor. It is all about Jesus. So bring somebody from work, bring somebody from your family, bring somebody from the store, whatever. You tell them to come with you. They don't want to miss next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. All right, Amen. let's stand up on our feet. And let's begin to pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for this day. Such a great day, Father. Father, as we release our seed, we release our faith, Father, with our necks fully outstretched, expecting, Father, for you to do what your word is said that you will do. As we invite you personally into our finances, Father, knowing that you are a God that knows how to God and you make no mistakes and you tell no lies. So we thank you, Father, for your word. And we thank you for your blood. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Let's say our confession of our finances. Repeat after me. Father God. Father God. Thank you. Thank you. For another opportunity. For another opportunity. To take part. To take part. In your tithing. In your tithing. And giving system. And giving system. I do so willingly. I do so willingly. And wholeheartedly. And wholeheartedly. As the peace of God. As the peace of God. Rules. Rules. Reigns. Reigns. And governs. And governs. My response. Our response. To this opportunity. To this opportunity. I thank you. I thank you. That wealth. That wealth and riches and riches are in my house. Are in my house. My descendants. My descendants will be prosperous. Will be prosperous and influential. And influential in their generation. In their generation, making them successful. Making them successful in all that you've called them to do. In all that you've called them to do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for empowering us. For empowering us and training us and training us so that you can trust us. So that you can trust us with all the increase. With all the increase that comes to our lives. That comes to our lives. We will be mindful. We will be mindful to give you to give you and you alone and you alone all. The glory, all the glory, and honor, and honor, and praise, and praise for all the good, for all the good you have bestowed that you bestowed upon our lives, upon our lives in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Father, as we leave this building, but never your presence, we thank you for the angels that stand guard of our life, shielding and protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen.